Hello students, welcome back to our discussion on the electrochemical equilibrium where we are discussing how to apply the generic concept of chemical potential and obtain useful information when I have an electrochemical system in equilibrium. So let me remind you that the experiment that we are talking about in our discussion is as follows. First of all, if you have a galvanic cell as shown in the figure here, you have a spontaneous chemical reaction taking place inside the cell. As a result of that chemical reaction, you have oxidation at the anode and reduction at the cathode. So during this process, at the anode, the substance undergoing oxidation would leave excess electrons on the electrode, thereby giving it a net negative charge. And the substance at the cathode would undergo reduction, which means that it will take more and more electron from the electrode and get reduced. And therefore, the electrode will become depleted of electrons and therefore there will be a net positive charge. Therefore, because of the spontaneous chemical reaction, we understand that the anode and the cathode will now be at different potentials. Therefore, if I connect them through an external circuit, what you will find is that the excess electron will be driven to, through this circuit in this direction such that in the long run what we will have is the cell discharging. Now if I consider this situation in such a way that I am applying an external potential to balance the potential difference between the two electrodes, then there may be many different situations. The first situation is where the externally applied potential Va is less than the cell potential E. So what is the cell potential? Once again, this is the difference in potential between the two electrodes present in the system. Now if the applied external voltage is less than E, then it is still possible for the electrochem the galvanic cell that I see here to drive electrons through the external circuit and the, this would correspond to the chemical reaction taking place sp spontaneously within the cell. Now if it so happens, I apply this external potential Vb and that matches the cell potential. In that case, there will be no current flowing through the external circuit. And then I would say that, well, the system for the given composition of the different components present in the cell, the system is poised for, for the chemical reaction, but there is no current flowing through the circuit, which would tell me that the cell must be at equilibrium under the given condition. And the third scenario that we have talked about is when I have applied an, uh, an external potential and Vc and that is greater than E. This means now that the reaction that was earlier taking place in the galvanic cell will now be driven to go in the opposite direction and the galvanic cell will be converted to an electrolytic cell. Now when I am interested in understanding electrochemical equilibrium, I have already mentioned that this is, it is this scenario that I am interested in. The question is why? The reason behind this is something that I have discussed in my last lecture. That is because when I am using the 
electrochemical cells, I am in interested in making it do some electrical work to the surrounding. And we have been able to show to you that the change in Gibbs free energy is equal to the maximum non-pressure volume work that can be obtained from an electrochemical cell such that del W electrical maximum is equal to dgtp. Now please remember that this equality sign holds only when the cell is operating reversibly. Now this tells me that I should operate my electrochemical cell in a situation under condition that mimics the reversible condition in the, uh, uh, in the best possible way. And in this connection, we also introduced the concept of electrochemical potential. So which is the chemical potential of the ith component in the absence of the potential difference plus an additional contribution coming into the picture when my ith component is present in the potential difference of pi. And then I understand that the maximum possible electrical work that I can derive from the electrochemical cell will depend on dg, where dg is given by an expression like this. Now look at this expression. As before, I have minus SDT plus VDP plus the summation over the contributions coming from all the components I present in the system and the dg depends on dni that is a infinitesimal variation in the number of moles of each component I. But unlike the previous case, we now have inserted instead of chemical potential, the electrochemical potential of the ith component as the coefficient of dni. Therefore, under constant temperature and constant pressure condition, now dgtp, which is a measure of the differential, maximum differential amount of work that I can extract from my electrochemical cell, that is going to be given by an expression like this. Now, this tells me that what is going to be the electrochemical reaction equilibrium? I know that the electrochemical reaction is characterized by the reaction Gibbs energy and the reaction Gibbs energy, let me remind you, is the derivative of the Gibbs free energy with respect to the progress of the reaction at a given temperature and pressure. And we know that this can be written down by an expression like this. And here, in order to take into consideration the fact that my chemical reaction is taking place in the presence of a cell potential, I have replaced mu i by mu i tilde. And therefore, at equilibrium, when the reaction has reached the equilibrium condition, I must be having for each component i nu i mu i tilde at the composition of the equilibrium mixture summed over all i equal to 0. Now this is something that I have already discussed and I would I simply wanted to summarize the main concepts to you in order to highlight the fact that unlike my previous lecture on chemical equilibrium, now we are looking at a chemical reaction under the condition where there is a potential difference between the two electrodes present in the system. Now I have also discussed another example and here I have an electrochemical cell which has been prepared by coupling what is known as a hydrogen electrode and it is coupled to what is known as a silver silver chloride electrode. And we have already seen that the cell reaction in this uh, electrochemical cell including 
the explicitly where the electrons are deposited and where the electrons are depleted, I can write it as this is the reactant state and this is the product state. Now, at equilibrium, what is going to be the condition? I have also highlighted that at equilibrium, I can write down the condition nu i mu i at equilibrium summed over all i should be equal to 0. But in this case, I must write mu, mu i tilde in place of mu i. So, let us now look at the different components of the system and find out what their coefficients are going to be. So, first we are going to consider the product side. So, in the product side, I have this species silver. So, nu of silver is going to be plus 2. Then I have H plus. So, nu of H plus is once again going to be plus 2. Then I have Cl minus and the nu of Cl minus is going to be plus 2 once again. And then in the product side, I have 2 moles of electrons being deposited on the left hand side electrode. And therefore, here for explicitly taking into account the contribution of the electrons, I have nu of the electrons deposited on the left hand side is equal to plus 2. Now, think about now the contributions coming from nu i mu i tilde when i is a, the ith component, not a product, but a reactant. In that case, obviously, I will have three different contributions. So, the first contribution will come from the hydrogen gas and here I understand that its coefficient nu of hydrogen is going to be minus 1. Similarly, nu of AgCl is going to be minus 2 and nu of the electron present at the right hand electrode is going to be minus 2 as well. And this is what I have written down in this equation. So, what I am doing is I understand here how many components do I have in on both the sides over here? I have actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 different components in the cell which I should take into account at equilibrium. Now, for each component, I need to write down nu i into its corresponding electrochemical potential at the equilibrium composition. So, I first write down the contributions coming from the products. So, nu i of A g is plus 2. So, this is the term. Then this is the term coming for the H plus. Then this is the term coming for C l minus and this is the term coming for the electron deposited on the left hand electrode. And now these are the contributions coming from the reactant side. As you see by convention I have used the stoichiometric coefficients with a negative sign to represent nu i. And therefore at equilibrium composition the values of each of these electrochemical potentials multiplied by their prefactors when added up must give me a sum equal to 0. Now, I also understand that especially at equilibrium, no current flows and therefore, the reactants and the products of the electrochemical reactions, they are present at phi equal to 0. But unlike a homogeneous solution phase reaction or maybe a uh, the other reaction in the absence of an electrochemical condition. Here I have the electrons which are being pre present at the electrodes, they are at different potentials. As you understand that this is a major difference between 
the situation where I am carrying out the reaction in an electrochemical cell and when I am carrying out a reaction in, an, uh, in a simple beaker otherwise. And therefore, the equilibrium condition now needs to be simplified. I understand that I can replace the electrochemical potential of these species which are present in as a paste in contact with the uh, uh, with the uh, platinum uh, wires, they will be present as electro, uh, not as electrochemical potential, but their contribution in the equilibrium condition will be present as chemical potential only. And then I can very easily write down that this condition, that is the contribution coming from the reactant and the product at equilibrium must be equal to this quantity which is nothing but the difference between the electrochemical potential of the electron at the right hand electrode and the electrochemical potential of the electron at the left hand electrode. Now if I use this relation further I know that for this reaction under normal condition where I did not have the electrons being deposited on the two uh, electrodes, the reaction gives energy will be given by an expression like this for the given reaction mixture. Therefore, I can say that at equilibrium for this cell reaction, I must be having delta Rg equal to the mu e tilde r minus mu e tilde l multiplied by 2. So, all I have done is I have introduced here on the left hand side the definition of reaction Gibbs energy and therefore, I find that in an electrochemical cell as shown here, I must be having the reaction gives energy equal to 2 into mu e tilde on the right hand electrode minus mu e tilde on the left hand electrode. Or in other words, if I introduce this notation that E is the cell potential when there is no current flowing, in that case E is going to be phi r minus phi l and this is given the name of zero current cell potential. In older literature, this used to be called the electromotive force or given the symbol EMF, but in modern literature to make the concept very clear, we will call it the zero current cell potential. And therefore, in the present case, we have the standard, uh, uh, the reaction gives energy for this electrochemical cell at equilibrium is equal to minus 2 f into E. And I have already shown you that this f is the celebrated Coulomb's constant and a Faraday constant and this has a value which is well known in literature. Now, with this background in mind, then if you want to establish the relationship between reaction gives energy and the zero current cell potential, this is, these are the steps that you will take to do so. First, for the given electrochemical cell, you will write down the half cell reactions. And then while writing so, you will note down the number of electrons transferred at each electrode. If the number of electrons transferred at each electrode is the same, then writing down the balance cell equation, uh, re, uh, equation uh, is simple. But if it is not, then you have to balance the uh, two sides of the electrodes and write down a balance cell reaction involving the same number of electrons. So, let us say that the number of electrons thus transferred is n. Now, from the experiment, you can always find out what the zero current cell potential is. 
in that case you will say that the reaction Gibbs energy is given by minus n f into E at the electrochemical cell. Now with this idea in mind let us go and consider some of the examples that we can apply this concept to. So this is the first example that I am taking here where a silver silver plus electrode is coupled to a silver silver chloride electrode with HCl as aqueous HCl as its electrolyte. Now for this cell I have the anode a half cell reaction and since oxidation takes place at anode I will be having the silver solid dissolving out into the aqueous solution leaving the electron on the left hand side electrode. There will be reduction at the cathode as a result of which silver chloride solid will leave some electrons uh, will uh, take out electron on the right hand electrode and itself gets, conver gets converted to silver solid and I will have Cl minus aqueous released in the aqueous HCl solution. Now if I add them up then the net cell reaction including explicitly the number of electrons exchanged turns out to be AgCl solid plus silver solid plus one mole of electron taken from the right hand electrode will give you one mole of Ag plus aqueous plus one mole of Cl minus aqueous plus one mole of electron deposited on the left hand side electrode which is the anode. So in this case what is the value of number of electrons transferred? n is equal to 1 and therefore I would, should be able to write that delta Rg is equal to minus Fe. Now let me take another example and here I have this uh, very uh, simple uh, cell where I have a metal metal uh, uh, electrolyte metal salt uh, solution serving as the anode as well as the cathode. And as you see here where, where is the cathode? The cathode is the copper solid copper sulphate aqueous electrode and the anode is the zinc solid zinc sulphate aqueous solution and the two of them are separate connected that the two electrolytes are connected by a salt bridge. So once again in the first step we write down the half cell reaction at the anode which is the oxidation of solid zinc such that it dissolves in zinc sulphate solution by getting converted to Zn2 plus and it leaves two electrons on the two moles of electrons on the left hand electrode for each mole of zinc solid being oxidized to one mole of zinc 2 plus. Now at the cathode reduction takes place where one mole of copper 2 plus from the aqueous solution takes up two electrons at the cathode on the right hand side and itself gets converted to copper solid. And if I now write down the cell reaction what should I get? I add the two up and I find that zinc solid plus copper 2 plus aqueous one mole of each when they withdraw two moles of electrons from the cathode they get converted to one mole of zinc 2 plus in the aqueous medium plus one mole of copper solid and they deposit two moles of electrons on the left hand electrode. So now it is very easy to understand the number of moles of electrons transferred during this cell reaction. I find that yes n is equal to 2 and with this n equal to 2 value I can 
we, uh, directly go and write down that for this cell reaction, the reaction gives energy at equilibrium, uh, the reaction gives energy is equal to minus 2 F E. Now, before we go any farther, I would like you to consider the following points on cell potential and the zero current cell potential. The difference in potential between two electrodes is called the cell potential. We have already talked about that. Now, a large cell potential implies that a large amount of electrical work can be performed from the given electrochemical system. Now, you must realize that the maximum electrical work available from the system can be utilized or can be extracted only if the system is operating reversibly at a specific constant composition. Now, in experimental situation, how do I implement this kind of a situation? So, you understand that there are two conditions that I am talking about in order to extract the maximum electrical work. I must make my electrochemical system operating reversibly and I also must not be having any large change in the composition such that effectively I can think of having a specific constant composition. And in order to achieve this, we understand that the cell potential needs to be measured when the current is zero. And as a result of this, we have introduced the concept of the zero current cell potential and we relate the zero current cell potential E to the reaction gives uh, 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 energy delta Rg where delta Rg is equal to minus N F E. So, obviously, the maximum utilization of the decrease in the Gibbs free energy of the system as the chemical reaction progresses would take place when I have a reversible process. And therefore, it is not the cell potential, but the zero current cell potential that is utilized in the experiments to understand the maximum extent to which electrical work can be extracted from the system. In the next lecture, I am going to talk about a more useful form of this relationship between the cell potential, zero current cell potential and the reaction gives energy. And this is known as the Nernst equation, which many of you must have seen during your high school days. So, in the next lecture, let us see how we can derive the Nernst equation from the consideration that I have already presented here. Thank you.